What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I want to talk about heatsink options for the all new Retro Flag Super Pie cases. If you're not familiar with these new cases, they are, in my opinion, the best retro style console case for the Raspberry Pi to date. Hands down, the best on the market. They're very well made and they even come with a good USB SNES style controller. As you can see, they have two styles, a Super Famicom style and the SNES style. In this video, I'm going to show you my heatsink option that I use for my Super Pi case, be it the Super Famicom version or the SNES version. Now there's a lot of stuff on the market. First thing everybody asked was, will the Kentaro heatsink work? No, it will not. There's not enough room inside. Plus, I only have the Raspberry Pi 3 version of that heatsink, and I'm running Raspberry Pi 3B Pluses in both of these cases. It won't work either way. I've had somebody test it for me. Next on the list, a really good cheap solution, is a copper heatsink. Now these little kits come with a few heat sinks, one for the CPU, one for the RAM chip, and one for the Ethernet chip. They do a decent job, but my favorite heat sink is this dual fan heat sink by iUniker and a few other companies make them. They're all over Amazon, they're 11 to $13 and well worth it. They make two versions, one for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and one for the Raspberry Pi 3. The longer one is for the 3, the shorter one is for the B Plus. Straight out of the box, it will not fit inside of these retro flag cases. You will have to move the fans back, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And unfortunately, if you're using the US SNES version of the retro flag case, the leads on the fan are a little too short to reach the 5 volt out on the PCB. But it's actually an easy fix. You can buy a JST extension cable, or you can solder in a longer wire if you want to. I'm going to leave links to some JST extensions on Amazon in the description. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about with this SNES version. When we move the fans back, the lead for the power on the fans is just a little too short to reach. But if you have the Super Famicom style looking retro flag case, it'll fit perfectly. It's really easy to modify. I just put it in here like it comes out of the box. It just will not fit. The fan set up a little too high. We're going to go ahead and remedy this really quickly. There are eight screws that hold the fans down to the heat sink. We're going to remove all eight screws. Now that we have all eight screws removed, we're just going to move the fans back and we're going to be using two screws for each fan. Now it's not going to be blowing directly on the heat sink, but it will circulate airflow. And I've also done thermal test using no heat sink, the copper heat sink, and this dual fan heat sink. I ran a 10 minute test running PS1. I'm going to show you that in just a second. So it's actually really simple to do this. Like I mentioned, the lead is a little short for the SNES style, but they do sell JST extensions. Links for those are in the description. That way you don't have to solder anything. And you can do this mod on your SNES version. When we're done, it's going to look a little something like this. Air is still going to circulate through here and it's actually still going to pass over the heat sink because it's blowing directly on the Pi. It's just going to displace that air and move right over there. It does work really well. I've done some testing. Everything fits on here perfectly now. All we had to do was move those two fans back just a bit. Here's a few quick pictures of the modified heat sink outside of the case just so you can get an idea of what was going on here. The fans were just moved backwards and we're using four screws to hold them in on the outer edge of the heatsink itself. It's going to work fine. I got some tests going on, but before we get to those tests, I want to show you the SNES version with this setup. Here's the modified heatsink inside of the SNES retro flag version. As you can see, everything fits except for this. It's just a hair short. Now, if you have some GPIO wires laying around, you can easily fix this by extending the fan power leads, or you can go ahead and order a JST extension. If I was to do it, I would probably just splice the wires on the fan lead itself and extend them with some extra wire I had laying around. If you can solder, this won't be a big deal at all. If you can't, just buy those JST extensions. Moving on to the thermal test. The way I tested this was run Tekken 3 in the PS1 emulator for 10 minutes. I was in training mode, same character, same everything for each one of these tests. I started Tekken 3 and then I started recording the temperature. Every 30 seconds I got a reading for 10 minutes. I'm just showing you the idle temp and the max temp 
at the end of 10 minutes. So none of these actually reached the thermal throttle threshold of 82 degrees Celsius, but eventually they would. The no heat sink would definitely do it if you ran this for 20 minutes. So at the very top, no heat sink, but I did have a case fan. Idle temp, 50.5 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes of PS1 gameplay, 67.1 degrees Celsius. The cheap copper heat sink and a case fan did pretty good. Idle temp, 47.2 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes of Tekken 3, 59.1 degrees Celsius. And finally, the dual fan heat sink, no case fan, idle temp, 42.4 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes of gameplay, 51.5 degrees Celsius. So obviously the dual fan heat sink is the winner here. And I knew it was going to come out on top. There's more aluminum here to absorb more heat out of that CPU. Plus we have two fans inside circulating. It's also whisper quiet compared to these cheap little fans you put on the case itself. A lot of people let me get them and they sound like jet engines. This dual fan heat sink is really, really quiet. In my opinion, the dual fan heatsink is the way to go. They're about $12 on Amazon. I'm going to leave links for everything I mention in the description. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. You can use copper. You can use aluminum. You don't even have to put a heatsink on here if you don't want to. But I myself will be using these dual fan heat sinks. And if you do end up ordering one, make sure you get the correct one for the correct Raspberry Pi you're using. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus one is a bit shorter than the Raspberry Pi 3 version. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.